How's everybody doing? Good. I want to feel like that every day. How about you? Yeah, every day. Here's what I figured out. It's hard to do that alone. I think it's much easier to do if you have a group of people. And I'm going to tell you a story today about the Design It Together movement and how this is enabling many people to do and design and solve some of the most challenging problems of our time together. And I'm specifically going to talk in this talk about social media. So this speaks perfectly to Catherine's talk that was earlier. But to give you a little contrast about where we've come in social media, I'm going to start with a little history. This is me as a teenager. This is a drawing I did as a teenager. I don't know about you, but I came up with a lot of ideas when I was a kid. And I was always trying to figure out how to make them. Anybody have ideas about how to make this? I'm not even sure what it is anymore. Um, but it's 3D. Um, OK. So, so what would I do? Well, I went to Radio Shack. Radio Shack is an excellent place. I went to my school library, and I read Encyclopedia Britannica. Why did I go there? This was the internet. Wow. We could connect to the university on uh, two miles down the street and say hello. That was basically it. Um, when I needed more expertise, I went to my science teacher or my parents. Um, they're very creative individuals, as you can tell. I love them. Uh, they didn't always, pro they provided me with support, right? Because they loved the creator. They loved the creator. They didn't always understand my cause, but they loved the creator. And, um, but they didn't always provide me with the peer and the expertise that I was looking for. So that describes a kind of classic, if you will, do it yourself experience, right? You've got an idea, you're looking for resources, community, expertise to make it happen. So what's happening today? I would argue it's a little different. And this is what blows my mind and is the reason I'm on stage. This is the internet today. So how do these people use the internet, social media to connect with community? Here's an example of some students who are recently putting videos up on Facebook, getting feedback from both their peers and experts about the quality of their, photo, their videos that they were then going to put on crowdfunding campaigns. Gets a little meta here, but they're crowdfunding feedback for their crowdfunding campaign. The number of comments below were extensive, giving them critiques about how to improve them. They're not sitting alone in their room coming up with a video. They're sharing it with others and getting feedback. What about expertise? You can go, and Catherine will love me here to say, have me say this, you can go to YouTube and learn anything. This is Steve Blank explaining the business model canvas. He's a top entrepreneur, entrepreneurship professor at Stanford. You can get a lecture directly from him, as have 11,000 folks. So I'm going to argue that we're in the Design It Together movement. Do, you, uh, do it yourself is over. We're in Design It Together. And here's how I'm trying to play this out right now. I, um, I'm the faculty founder of an organization called Design for America that started at Northwestern. And what we're doing is we're a community of practice. We have students, we have uh, faculty, we have uh, professional experts throughout the country working on some of the most challenging problems of our time. And we're doing it together. We're not doing it alone. Um, we're doing it outside of class time and without the tra traditional incentives of the that are inherent in the universities in which we're sitting. So what are we doing? We're hacking education. Here's how we're doing it. Uh, well, first, we're doing it well. We've been thrilled to get some great press. I'm going to call out Hannah on the left. She's a 22-year-old mechanical engineering student who was just recently named as one of the top 15 women to watch in tech by Inc. Magazine. A woman in mechanical engineering, 22. Like, Just appreciate that. That's exciting. That's very exciting. Um, We've had some great impact uh, in just about three years. We've had 25 projects in the, in the pipeline, uh, three patents, two teams in incubators. This is Merton Yuri, who just pitched in the Health Box incubator up in Chicago and are raising, um, well, a lot of money to realize their, their product and start their business that's related to hand hygiene. So who's involved? Well, it's called Design, uh, Design for America, but we have everybody involved. We have mentors, we have faculty, we have students from all different majors, psychology, sociology, civil engineering, you name it, they're involved. Um, I think this is fascinating and exciting. It means that design is not just for designers. It means design is not just for engineers. Design is a human desire. It's a hu human tendency to want to improve the world around us. Everybody can be involved. 
What kind of projects do they pick? The students are picking projects that are in education, environment, and health. They're tackling grand challenges, and the way that we see it is let's tackle the smallest change with the biggest impact, right? We're 18 to 22 year olds. What can we really do? What's in, what are we capable of doing? These are, um, I can go through many of you, many of these with you, but they range from reducing obesity. That's a big problem. They narrow it down to something they can work on. Improving hand hygiene, narrow it down to a local hospital down the street. What kind of process are they taking? A design process, a systems design process. This is an example of the process map from the hand hygiene team that was working to, first of all, understand the system. So you don't learn about hand hygiene by hanging out in your studio. You go to the hospital, you talk with the doctors, you spend, you spend the night there, you eat pizza with them. That's how you learn about the system in which hand hygiene um, exists. Defining the problem and prototyping solutions. You hang out with their mentor, Jeannie Olson, who's in the crowd here, their professional design mentor, and you actually prototype the solutions. You bike over to her house at four o'clock in the afternoon, desperate to show her the ideas that you're coming up with because you want feedback on it. And then you test it and you go through this over and over again. And this is what's leading to this company now, Swipe Sense Success. So just as the students, we teach the students to take an iterative design-based um, and systems-based approach, we've taken that to the design of the organization itself. So what's the nature of the organization? What causes students to work harder on this than some of their classes? Um, it's extracurricular. It's kind of obvious, right? When somebody is not breathing down your throat telling you to do something. I got sick of people, I teach a lot of creativity, I teach innovation, I got sick of people handing in PowerPoints on the last day of class, right? worried about what grade they're gonna get. I'm thinking, this is not the outcome. It's not me evaluating you, giving you a grade. It's what impact are you making in the world, right? And it turns out if you bring things extracurricularly, um, people are often very motivated and take more risks and the risks necessary to, to solve some of the challenges that they wanna face. Um, as I mentioned, you learn through doing. You don't learn about creativity, innovation through reading about it, you learn through doing. And so we have students saying, you know, other classes handed us the problem on a platter and told us here is what the problem is and you have to figure it out. In Design for America, you have to figure out what the problem is. So it's a, it's a fundamental reshift of innovation education. Learning how to do something when there's not a teacher breathing down your neck telling you to get this report in. So we've been evaluating the program the whole way, trying to say what works about this, what doesn't work, what can we change? And these are some qualitative uh, quotes that um, my colleagues and I have collected. Okay, so another insight, another design principle of this is what are the desire lines of the Design It Together um, movement? And when we think about desire lines, desire lines are those paths on the campus that they're not paved, they're not the ones that people told you to go on, they're the ones that people naturally take. They indicate desire and intention and um, fun really uh, the possibility of taking a new path. So what happens not between 9 and 5 when you're in classes. What happens between 5 p.m. and 9 a.m.? Because let's be honest, that's when the exciting things happen. What's happening there? Well, people are working in communities of practice. They're working with other students and partners and mentors. They're, they're engaging in hackathons. They're engaging in this. They're engaging in events like this. Who's getting an A for this activity right now? Anybody? Oh, somebody raised their hand. Somebody is going to get an A for this. But only one of you is going to get an A. I would argue this is, exact, this is a community of practice. Look who, who's in this audience, a wonderfully diverse group of people, right? It's not, this is not a typical lecture hall. So we have eight studios right now. We're going up to 15 this year. We're expanding wildly at many different studios. Um, our vision is to be across the country. Why? Because students are working on local challenges, and so we, our vision is that if we all work on local challenges throughout the country, we'll have the, the country covered. So the Design It Together movement is socially mediated, and this is critical to our strategy, critical. So what does this mean? Well, just the other day, the Cornell studio posts um, a project on a, a storytelling platform and said, hey, we have this project about getting um, students to vote. Somebody picked it up on Twitter, not related to Cornell, and TurboVote, who's an organization um, who implements projects like this, reached out to Cornell, and guess what? Now the Cornell students are going to TurboVote and they're gonna implement this, these ideas this summer, right? So socially mediated implementation of this, this solution. Um, on YouTube, we have students, we have experts and novices interacting, we have novices and novices interacting. They're getting the information they need and they're also posting raw ideas. They're not always perfectly formed. We have students saying, uh, and again, Catherine would love this, I got my electrical engineering degree from Google, right? That's, 
that's a student with a degree from a prestigious university, right? Saying, I got my electrical engineering degree from Google. And obviously, he doesn't mean that literally, but it's interesting to think about what kind of, how do we need to think about education if students now have resources like this. Um, Skyping face-to-face, -face, this is, happens all the time. I would say we have a lot of meetings happen face-to-face. -face. A lot of them happen uh, socially mediated, right? And so we have studios talking to other studios. This is the Northwestern studio talking to, I think, the Columbia studio. Okay, we also do a lot of reflection. We talk about the failures, we talk about the successes, and we broadcast them publicly. Whoa, broadcast failure. What a novel idea, but guess what? When you broadcast failure, you get a lot of great feedback from your community and from experts. Here are two students who um, are now Design for America fellows, Mert and Yuri. They went down to a TechBoc incubator, and this is what I love about this photo, is Facebook. First day, they're in the incubator downtown Chicago, and they write, hey, this is a real-time photo, folks, and guess what people do? I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I just want to point it out. People write notes back of support. Hey, great job, guys. Hey, good luck, go for it. Um, you're living the dream, keep going, right? They get real-time support for what they're doing, not delayed gratification. I think this is pretty, pretty interesting and pretty, um, when you're taking chances, I think this is a pretty interesting notion. Doing a lot of photo sharing and blogging, amplifying the community, and then again, like I said, doing a lot of storytelling, putting a lot of their stories out there, successes and failures, and getting some authentic feedback, either from community partners or from experts that have some idea in this. We're starting to get into crowdfunding, as I alluded to earlier. Students are now saying, okay, great, I've done this project, now I wanna, I wanna go to the crowd, I wanna get funds for this. This is how I wanna fund the project. I'm not gonna go to the traditional fundraising route, I'm gonna go to the crowds and do this. And guess what, sometimes we're winning and sometimes we're failing. Again, a little different play. This is like 20-year-olds failing. These are, it's no longer like I want to have my perfect resume. Um, in fact, one of the recruiters from, uh, I think it was Facebook the other day, said, I'm, I'm now expecting 18 to 20-year-olds to actually have shown me failures. If they just show me classwork, that's what everybody's done. Show me something that you did that was different from everybody else. So this is the Design It Together movement, and um, I think it's made possible by the social media that's now present, and this is Design for America. This is where we're playing out a lot of these ideas, and I want to encourage you guys to join me in the Design It Together movement with Design for America. Thank you.